Hi everyone. In light of recent events that are going on around the world, everyone having to self-quarantine in attempts to flatten the curve, I'd like to invite all of you to join me for some live music. Now, this live stream is going to be taking place right here on YouTube tomorrow, April 10th, from 11.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. And that's Central Time, 11.30 a.m. to 12 p.m., Friday, April the 10th. Join me right here for some live music. I will also be taking requests. So come on, join me, and bring your requests. And I will see what I can do to fulfill all those requests. I hope you all are having a wonderful day, and please stay safe. Forrest Fisher from Simply Piano Tuning Repair and Events, and I'd like to welcome you back to another episode of Theory Thursday. Now, last episode, we learned the layout of the keyboard, white keys and black keys, how those are presented. We also learned the note names, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and we also learned what that looks like on the on sheet music, on the music stuff. That's one of the ways that uh, musicians can figure out, okay, are we playing low or high sounds on the keyboard? So in this episode, I want to talk about scales and the scale formula. Now, if any of you have maybe taken any music lessons in the past, you know, or you are now, you know, on whatever instrument, you know, you may have heard your lesson teacher talk about, you know, you got to practice your scales. Some of you may just groan like, oh, scales, cannot handle that. Here's why scales are important. Having that knowledge of scales chords and music theory, it allows them to sight read more difficult music quickly. So let's get started. All right, so before we get into the scale formula per se, I want to very briefly discuss ledger lines. Now, as you know from last episode, each stave has only five lines and four spaces, but there are so many more notes on the piano than what's on these staves. So what do we do? We use ledger lines to note where these other notes are on the staff and to help you know where to play them on the piano. All right, so first we're gonna look at the treble clef. Now, figuring out ledger lines, there's no mnemonic device really um, that I'm aware of at least. Now, there may be some out there, but basically, if you know where the top line in this example, if you know the top line of the treble clef then you can basically just skip up lines, the number of lines, until you find um, what note that is called. So in this example, we have ledger lines on lines themselves, not on spaces. So we know that the top line of the treble clef is F from every good boy does fine. So in this first measure here, we know that we need to skip up one note that would make this note A. In measure two, we need to do two skips from F. Two skips from F. So one skip up is A, and then we skip up one more time, and that brings us to C, and so on and so forth with the other measures. All right, same concept with the spaces, all right? We know that the top space of the treble clef is E from face, F-A-C-E. All right, so the note in measure one is also on a space. We actually need to skip up two spaces because there is a space that sits on top of the clef, and I'll talk about that in just a moment here. So measure one, we need to skip up two spaces from E. So one skip up is G, and then another skip up is B. Now let's look at measure two. We need to skip up three spaces from E. All right, so one skip up is G, two skips up is B, as we just saw from measure one, and then if we skip up one more time, we will arrive at D. All right, so those are lines on the spaces. And same concept goes for the bass clef ledger lines except instead of skipping up, we're skipping down. So I'll just do measure one for an example. We know the bottom line is G 
So we need to skip down one line, which we would arrive at E. Same thing for the spaces, of course. We know the bottom space is A, all cows eat grass. Now we need to skip down two because there's a space, just like in the treble clef stave, there in the bass clef there is a note that sits kind of on the bottom space, like just below that bottom line G there. So we need to do two spaces. So one skip down from A is F, and then we need to skip down once more, and that will be D. All right, and here's a quick little picture of the uh, notes I was talking about earlier that sit on the top of the treble clef on the bottom, and same thing on the bass clef. So we have G sitting on top of the treble clef right there. That's on a space. And then the bottom space sitting just below the treble clef is D right there. All right. And same thing with the bass clef. We have um, B that's sitting on top right there, top of the bass clef. And then we have low F sitting on that bottom space. All right. It's right next to that bottom line G. All right. So now let's get into the actual scale formula. Now, the scale formula is divided into whole steps and half steps. Now, a whole step is defined basically as going from white key to white key. Now, there are two exceptions to this. If you go from E to F, that is not a whole step, that is a half step. Also, if you go from B to C, that is also not a whole step, that is a half step. The reason these are only half steps is because there is no black key in between. If you go from other white keys to white keys, like for example D to E, you're skipping over a black key in between, so that is a whole step. So once again to review the exceptions, B to C is a half step and E to F is a half step because they do not skip over a black key. Now, the actual scale formula itself, as you can see on the screen, it's whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. All right? All major scales are made up of this pattern of whole steps and half steps. So there you have it. That's a little bit about the scale formula and ledger lines. Next week, we're going to get into actual scales. You know, how many scales are there and keys as well. And we're also going to get into black keys, sharps, and flats and what all that means. So please join us for that video next week for Theory Thursday. If you did enjoy this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. I have several other videos about Theory Thursday. Those will be forthcoming. And I also have videos about me playing various pieces of music and a series called Tuning Tuesday where we tune a piano. So if any of that interests you, please consider subscribing and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.